Welcome to Gender Matters, how gender differences affect teaching and learning. This webinar will focus on how girls and boys are different, cognitively and socially, and how educators' awareness can help provide an effective learning environment to meet their needs. We're glad you've joined us. We have a lot to cover, so let's get started. Think about this and fill in the blanks. Girls are Boys are. Many of us can think of a variety of generalizations to complete those sentences. But how is that possible? Well, the simple answer to that question could be based on life's experiences, things you've seen and heard that could help form a broad view of how girls and boys are alike or different. Have you ever heard of the book, Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus? This book was published in the 90s. Or the more recent book and movie, Act Like a Lady, Think Like a Man. Both touch on the basic differences between gender, and as you can see, based on the timing of both books, this topic is nothing new. Many of the media sources, entertaining or fact-based, related to adults, there is much to consider on the discussion of gender differences in young children. This is why we will focus on how gender differences can have a direct impact on how children learn and develop skills. We as educators play an important role in our awareness on how gender differences affect how we teach. So it's important to become familiar with the various research on gender differences in young children and how to apply the information to teacher-student interactions. Take a moment and glance over the underlying questions and topics we'll cover. There are multiple definitions for the term gender. The definition we'll use refers to the behavioral, cultural, or psychological traits typically associated with one's sex. Our societal views are in a constant state of change. Think about it. In the 50s and the 60s, people spoke very freely about gender differences. The 70s brought about feminist movements where it was taboo to discuss differences in gender. There was a fear that one gender would be viewed superior over the other. In the last couple of decades, we've come full circle, and it's okay to talk about gender differences again. So let's address gender identity and gender roles. This information directly affects how young children think and learn. According to the American Academy of Pediatrics, a child's awareness of being a boy or a girl starts in the first year of life. Before their third birthday, they are easily able to label themselves as either a boy or a girl, as they acquire a strong concept of self. Psychologist Lawrence Kohlberg, best known for his theory of stages of moral development, theorized gender identity developmental stages in young children. He believed that during the early preschool years, young children engage in what is called gender labeling. They learn to understand their gender and what being that gender means in their everyday life. Let's look at an example. 
Here's Kohlberg's theory of what a young child may think about during outdoor playtime. Jessica thinks to herself, if I play ball with the boys on the playground and I get my hair cut short, I will become a boy. Here's another example that you may relate to. Have you ever heard children say things like this? Tony is a boy's name. Or, James has long hair like a girl. Statements like these are formed because children begin to process learned information based on what they see and hear during their social interactions and how adults respond to what they say. We can learn about gender roles and identities from philosopher Jean Piaget, most known for his theories of cognitive development in young children. He believed that during playtime, children begin to gravitate towards gender-specific items. Think about the gender-specific items in your classroom. Dolls and dinosaurs may come to mind. Although both girls and boys may play with the same items, Piaget's theory suggests that many of the boys in the classroom will choose dinosaurs and girls will choose dolls. Children's social interactions bring awareness to stereotypical gender-related activities and behaviors. Through daily routines, rituals, and activities, they begin to gain early exposure to gender roles and see how they are different. Young children try to answer the question, what does it mean to be a boy? Or, what does it mean to be a girl? Theorist John Monet and Anka Ehart created a theory called the biosocial approach. They believe that the social labeling and differential treatment of boys and girls begins when a child is born. Can you think of some examples? How about the association of the color blue with boys and the color pink with girls? Or perhaps, Boys are encouraged not to cry when they hurt themselves versus girls being comforted. There are several factors that influence children's awareness of what it means to be a boy or a girl. These factors include a child's family structure, culture, religion, or other experiences during their formative years. It is difficult for a child to grow to adulthood without experiencing some form of gender stereotyping. Research shows that parents treat sons and daughters differently. This has a strong impact on a child's developing sense of self and self-esteem. Cultural and religious gender ideals and values influence how young children think and learn. Research shows that across different cultures, Males are expected to be independent, assertive, and competitive, while females are expected to be more passive, sensitive, and supportive. These beliefs continue to be debatable, yet apparent around the world. So think about it. The word different does not equate to one's gender being better or smarter than the other. The fact that boys and girls are different means just that. Now let's look at a couple of physical differences that can impact their learning processes. Did you know that there are differences in how boys and girls hear? Research states that girls hear better at higher frequencies than boys, so this could impact communication skills. You can probably think of times when you've had to change the tone of your voice to get a child's attention. Did you know that another physical distinction between girls and boys is the anatomy of the eye? Girls have more of what are called P cells, which process color and texture. Boys have more of what are called M cells, which process location, direction, and speed. So think of your students and how this can affect them. You may think of girls in your class who enjoy art activities and are more detailed in their creations. You may think of some boys that squirm, kick, and wiggle more than their female peers. You may also think about how these physical differences impact a child's toy selection and what boys and girls consider fun and interesting. 
Did you know that one major physical difference between girls and boys is their brain structure? Take a minute and look at the diagrams. Next, we'll share how all of this information plays a part as to why boys and girls do what they do. In a 2008 Northwestern University study, children participated in a verbal and auditory activity. Brain scans revealed that more areas of the cerebral cortex were dedicated to verbal functions in girls and showed greater activity in language areas. Brain scans and research also revealed that more areas of the cerebral cortex are dedicated to spatial and mechanical functions in boys. This means that many boys learn best using movements and images in addition to words. Can you relate to this fact? Teachers often complain about a classroom full of boys, but usually not a classroom full of girls. Why the disparity? Research states that boys can be more fidgety, restless, impulsive, and aggressive. This is because boys connect to others through physical contact. Girls tend to be more verbal and interpret physical behavior as a negative. Did you know that there are biochemical differences between boys and girls? Chemicals like serotonin and oxytocin and androgens impact how the brain functions. Girls tend to have more serotonin and oxytocin, which drives their desire to bond, connect with others, communicate, observe, and practice intuitive skills. Boys have more androgens, like testosterone, which impacts their competitive nature, self-assertiveness, and their desire to play, fight, and wrestle. Now let's think. Can these brain structure differences impact social and emotional development in young children? The answer is yes. Keep in mind all of the factors we've shared up to this point, because you'll see how they all relate. Take a look at this social interactions chart. It's clear that boys and girls are different in the ways that they form friendships and how they problem solve. Can you think of specific children and their interactions with each other that support Leonard Sachs's research? Let's focus on why their social interactions with each other are different. The social interactions chart points out several differences between boy and girl friendships. The differences become clear and are more noticeable when you watch children interact with each other. For example, a girl's best friend at school is one of the main reasons she wants to go to school, and everything becomes right when that friend walks in the classroom door. This is because preschool girls form social attachments that have a great deal of importance and meaning. As educators, it's important to encourage girls to reach beyond their social sphere and become comfortable around a variety of people. Boys' friendships are usually built around active play. The social interactions chart points out that boy friendships focus on a common game or activity. Boys connect through physical contact such as wrestling or roughhousing. They enjoy the opportunity to test themselves against each other. Boy friendships oftentimes begin during interactive, competitive times on the playground or in the block areas of the classroom. Unlike the girls, boy friendships tend to stay consistent and last throughout the school year. We mentioned earlier that boys connect through physical contact. 
However, a boy's need to be physically active with his peers is oftentimes misjudged as a behavioral issue. Did you know that boys are twice as likely to be diagnosed with a learning disability or behavioral disorder? They are also more likely to be diagnosed with ADHD or ADD. Did you know that they are three times more likely to be expelled from school? Think about all the factors that contribute towards their social behaviors. What do you believe educators can do to meet the needs of highly active boys? The social interactions chart also focuses on differences in how boys and girls converse and how self-disclosure can be a factor. Here's an example. Have you ever seen or heard a group of girls tell another girl in the classroom, we're not your friend, or you can't come to our playhouse because we don't like you? The cortical areas of their brains are used more, resulting in verbal and emotive actions. Since self-exposure and disclosure are the marks of true friendships for girls, they can be verbally aggressive and emotional toward each other. Leonard Sachs's research helps educators look closely at the fundamental differences between girls and boys. Their brains are different, their childhood development is different, and their perceptions of the world around them are different. Let's take a closer look at how we can positively affect children's social and educational interactions. Notice the term gender sensitivity. We need to become gender sensitive. Let's look at what that actually means. Gender sensitivity is the act of being aware of the ways people think about gender so that the individuals rely less on assumptions about traditional and outdated views on the roles of men and women. Normally, it is unintentional that a teacher interacts differently towards girls and boys. For example, how many of you direct words like honey and sweetie towards girls or buddy or little man towards boys. Unbeknownst to us, our verbal interactions are influential. Take a minute and review the questionnaire. Think about your role in the classroom. Are you a gender sensitive educator? Being gender sensitive offers more choices and gives children the opportunity to view each other as individuals with different capacities without assumptions about the traditional roles men and women may fill. Here are a few strategies to help promote positive learning experiences for children regardless of gender. Strategy number one, pay attention to children's literature. The main characters provide models, illustrations, and definitions of masculine and feminine behaviors. Can you think of books that your students enjoy that may paint pictures of gender stereotypes? What about stories of princes and princesses? Does the prince always rescue the helpless princess? To combat the stereotypical fairy tales, read the book, The Paper Bag Princess, to expose children to a story where the princess rescues the prince. The princess in the story is portrayed as a smart, courageous, and resilient young lady. Strategy number two. Pay attention to your students' activity choices. Who plays in the block area? Who plays in home living area? Educators should encourage cross-gender activities and play in centers. Let's think about the following scenario. During center time, you notice Jonathan and Jessica in the home living area, pretending to open a restaurant. Jonathan tells Jessica, I'm going to put on the construction hat and build the tables. Jessica tells Jonathan, I'm going to buy the food and make a menu. You notice that they get their friends to help. Jessica grabs her girlfriends and Jonathan grabs his guy friends. Once they all finish building and gathering materials, the girls begin cooking and the boys tell the girls what they would like from the menu. They are all playing peacefully and learning about the different foods and customs in the process. But in order to make their experience gender neutral, 
what could you do? Could you A, join in their pretend play, sit down at the table and ask Jonathan or one of his guy friends to cook something for you? B, join in their pretend play, put on a construction hat and ask Jessica if she can help you build a dessert bar? C, join in their pretend play and ask open-ended questions to gain a better understanding of their thought processes? Example questions would be, why is it that all of the girls are doing the cooking? Jonathan, what do you think you could cook off this menu to serve to all of your friends? D. All of the above. <laughs> Strategy number three. Pay attention to plan lessons. Teachers can present non-traditional images and role models through large or small group activities. Teachers should request adult speakers of different professions to come to school and share what they do for a living. Feature real-life picture books and allow children to share what their parents do for a living and provide opportunities for girls and boys to participate and interact with each other during the same activities or games. As you plan your lessons, pay attention to your classroom materials and displays. For example, small dolls can be accessible in the block area. Also, materials for the play salon could include barber tools and magazines. Bulletin boards and picture displays can show various occupations of both males and females. For example, representations may include male nurses or female firefighters. Strategy number four, continue to educate yourself and provide family workshops and information for parents. Professional development is key to increase awareness of ongoing gender issues in our society. Educators are urged to evaluate their entire school program and how children may view the teachers and administrators around them. Do the children in your school see male and female teachers or administrators in different roles around the schools? Are parents encouraged to have discussions with their children about gender through newsletters and parent-teacher meetings? So why does gender matter? Based on the information today, we can conclude that young children create their own meanings of gender based on the social cues of adults around them and their environments. As educators, we must remain aware of the gender stereotypes to ensure that we meet our students' individual needs. Thanks for listening. Make sure you access the resources available for you to use to support your efforts in your classroom and to provide information for parents.